responsibility, Mr. Rawat, for you yes. to bring in as many uh, people to come see yes. and yes, yes, uh, spread the word. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So thank you so much. Thank you. Now uh, I invite uh, Lori, uh, Tori, Tori uh, Harkalo, the Education Coordinator of uh, Wilton Wildlife uh, Preserve and Park, Wilton, New York, USA. Uh, we apologize uh, for uh, we are running late for uh, around 15 minutes. So, uh, Tori, are you, uh, are you there? I'm right here. Yeah, thank, thank you for bearing with us. So, please go, go ahead with your presentation. Thank you. First off, thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park. We're always happy to um, show everybody what we're working on and creating in such a small community. Um, so I want to introduce myself. My name is Tori. I'm the education coordinator for Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park. Um, today we'll be discussing assistance in conservation, particularly with an endangered species. Um, so we'll make examples of the unique relationships Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park has established throughout the years um, to engage our community in conservation efforts. This includes public volunteers, family-based family programming, and school settings, of course. So I'm going to put this on present. My apologies here. Okay, there we go. So our mission at Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park is to conserve ecological systems and natural settings while providing opportunities for environmental education and outdoor recreation. So there's three parts to our mission, of course, um, and the one we focus on the most is education, but of course we have all these natural settings that require some conservation efforts and we are able to assist in doing so. Because of our partners, um, we're able to uh, to put on all of these different programs. So Wilton Wildlife Preserve does not own any land. Uh, we work with our land owning partners by providing educational opportunities and public outreach to local communities. So we're also able to provide that assistance in the conservation projects as well. Oops. So our partners are uh, the Nature Conservancy, the Town of Wilton, as we're located in the Town of Wilton, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, and Saratoga County. Because of these partnerships, we're able to actively engage our volunteers in rewarding experiences. Um, so we're able to teach communities the importance of natural settings and gain further support um, as, from them as we carry out our mission. Because of their support um, with our land owning partners, Wilton Wildlife was established in 1996, uh, offering 2,500 acres of protected lands and over 25 miles of trails. Uh, it's really important to note that since COVID, uh, COVID-19 and all of its variants, we've seen increased interest in the use of our trails and our educational programming. So that's just really uh, uh, been able to allow us to increase our outreach and opportunity to educate and gain support from um, a protection of outdoor settings from our local communities. So we're really excited for those opportunities. Um, and all of this ended up coming to be uh, a catalyst of this uh, whole preserve and park in our local communities is a small one inch butterfly. So the Carner blue butterfly was an endangered species uh, in New York in 1977, and then it was placed on the federal endangered species list in 1992. So this butterfly is only about an inch, about the size of a U.S. quarter. They're very small, very <laughs> hard to find if you're not searching for them. They fly very low, um, but they are feder federally endangered because of mainly habitat loss. Uh, there is less meadow habitat where their host plant thrives. So as you can see in this bottom photo here, you may see a flower. This is the wild blue lupin, and it requires sandy soils and open meadow habitat in order to thrive. So really dry habitat, um, open, full sun, and uh, without those sandy soils, they're not able to exist or not able to grow the species of wild blue lupin. But it's so valuable and important to the Carner blue butterfly because in their caterpillar phase, this is the only food that they eat is the leaves of the wild blue lupin. So without this flower able to grow and with less natural spaces available to them, we're seeing a huge decrease in their population. In fact, out of their original population size, only 1% of their population is remaining. 
So it's a huge concern. And the only way that we would be able to uh, do all that we do is with the assistance of our volunteers. Um, so gaining uh, community support and outreach and also uh, gaining the assistance from our volunteers and, and people who want to create a positive impact on the environment around them. So in doing so, let's see, we've got our butterfly right here. This is just an, a video of the uh, endangered Carner blue butterfly. Uh, people really get to get close on interactions with them on our trails. We have quite a few of them here and uh, they will even land on your hands or different body parts. They like your shoes a lot. So people are getting uh, one on one interaction with something that is uh, rare and hard to find, uh, something that's unique that they're not going to be able to experience in other places. So it's really highlighted the importance of protecting these natural settings um, and allowed us to go as far as we have. So here's an example of just some of the volunteer and conservation efforts that we've had um, with our partnership with the DEC, the Department of Environmental Conservation of New York State. Um, we're able to provide volunteers with the opportunity to get close and personal with a unique and rare spe species and give them the opportunity to feel impactful. I'm making an influence or I'm making a positive impact on my environment or my surroundings in my community, not just somewhere far off. Um, so some of these examples include, uh, we have researchers that go into the habitat to do butterfly counts. And regularly we have to uh, replace their flags for their transects or their, their lines that they count on. Um, so we will go out and assist the DEC with replacing these flags so that our bi biologists can get accurate butterfly counts or numbers. It also includes different projects, including uh, sapling cutting or tree cutting. Now, normally you would expect to want to plant trees, but in our situation, we want to remove those trees uh, because it, it encroaches on that open meadow habitat space uh, that the butterfly needs in order to thrive. Um, so you can see in the top right corner, I'm <laughs> cutting down some baby trees there uh, so we can keep our habitat nice and open. It also includes uh, conservation projects such as uh, seed picking. So we go out into the fields of the Carner Blue Butterfly, giving our volunteers close interactions with the Carner Blues um, as we pick those seed pods that the wild blue lupin creates and so that we can use those seeds to establish more habitat. So uh, giving those people opportunities or our volunteers opportunities to uh, create new habitat and, and create more natural spaces and environment around them. But we also are, we're also able to do so through our public programming and our public, our programming with our local schools. Um, so most programming is geared towards our local youth as their young and impressionable minds uh, will have the most impact on the future of our environment. Um, so a lot of our programs are family based or are uh, directly associated with uh, children development and children education. While we offer opportunities to learn about natural settings throughout the year, uh, the heart of our educational programming at Wilton Wildlife really has to do with this endangered species, the Carner Blue Butterfly. So in order to create our programs, we have an education model for endangered species. Um, and I can probably put that right there as we go in the background. Can you conclude? We are running out of time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So our educational model is uh, awareness, relativity, and opportunity. Okay. So uh, creating awareness in our, uh, in, in our local communities by presenting programs that they didn't know where these uh, Carner Blue Butterflies existed, making it relative and making it uh, uh, close to them or, or important to them in their, their daily lives. Um, so by making it... Uh, um, excuse me, by making it uh, close to them. For example, most endangered species that we think of are considered to be far off, not, not really relative to them. They know that it's there, but it's not something that they concern themselves with. But here we have an endangered species in our own backyard. So it makes it relative, it makes it important to them. And then by creating opportunities for them to be able to educate uh, in, uh, or, or uh, us giving them opportunities by educating and giving them uh, ways to make an impact on their young, in their young age. So we were able to do that through our Lupin Lab program, um, creating awareness and relativity. So we went to schools, we were able to grow that wild blue Lupin that that uh, uh, 
carnival butterfly needs to survive. And then later on, they're able to come as a field trip and plant that in the habitat of the uh, carnival blue butterflies. They're directly making an impact, a visible uh, result of them helping out in the environment. And so we've seen that this is uh, a really great way to educate um, and that we've seen great results with our teachers and interest in, in our local families and our schools as well. So speaking of opportunities, uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of our endangered species, the Carner Blue Butterfly in Wilton Wildlife Preserve and Park. And we hope that you'll be interested in uh, learning about our education model as well. Thank you so much, Tori. Thank you. Now I invite uh, Isabella, uh, president of CUS Chile, 